And now we come to our last and final example for the one-way analysis of variance or one-way ANOVA. And this is our example three, wherein we're gonna follow the procedure using the p-value approach. So the iron content in three different types of food is shown below, or, you know, at the right. At the 0 0.05 level of significance, is there a sufficient evidence to conclude that a difference in the mean iron content exists for meats and fish, breakfast cereals, and nutritional high protein drinks? So I forgot to input the source, but there's a source for this information. And what we're going to do is we're going to check if there's a significant difference. So um, we're going to go ahead and say that the null hypothesis is there is no significant difference between the three different, um, uh, what they call this, types of food, meat, sorry, meats and fish, breakfast cereals, nutritional drinks. And our alternative hypothesis will be that there exists at least one significant difference between them. The alpha level is 0 0.05, and we'll go ahead and use ANOVA for this, or Jamovi for this. So I'm going to call this now, this was our previous example, meat and fish. I'm going to call this M fish. I'm going to make sure it's spelled correctly this time. We have breakfast cereals, if my memory serves me well. Right. And lastly, we have, what was that? Nutritional drinks. Okay, so for the meats and fish, we're gonna copy down the uh, the values here: one point nine, one point one, two point one. Okay, one point nine, one point one, two point one, one point nine, one point one. Okay. Right after that. 1.9, 1.1, 1.8, and 6.1. How many are there? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. One nine one one two one one nine one one. One nine one one two one. One nine one 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 eight six one. Well, that's it. That's the value of the iron content. Um this should be meat and fish. Oh, I got some mistakes here. Shouldn't be written like this. Should be written like this. So I'll call this the iron content now. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, this would be the type of food. Let's call that that. Or do we have a certain variable name for that? Yeah, type of food. That's right. And I'm gonna, we don't need that. Okay. Next is we need to write the breakfast cereals. So I'm gonna call this breakfast cereals. Sorry, I'm gonna copy that down here two four six eight yeah that's right there eight nine two okay one point five three point two three point eight seven point three one point two oops sorry and uh four point two Double check them. 9, 2, 1.5, 2, 3.8, 7.3, 1.2, 4.5. That's right. And we have a nutritional. Oh, I forgot to do this. Nutritional drinks. Okay. I guess there are seven of them. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have 7.5. 4 7.5, 4.6, 4.5. Okay, 9.56, and 4, and 9.1. Okay, so 7.5, 4 4.5, 9.5, 6, 4, 9.1. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up the ANOVA here. I'm going to click on Analysis, and we're going to click on ANOVA. Click on One Way ANOVA, please. And we're going to input the iron content as the dependent variable and the type of food and in the grouping variable. 
and we want to uh, check on the normality test first and the homogeneity essentially we want the, the normality first but you know why not so we're going to look at this shapiro wilk and here we go shapiro wilk shows that it is not that it is significant implying that there is a violation in the assumption of normality now everybody if this happens to you that the shapiro wilk actually we don't need the homogeneity um if the shapiro wilk is significant it means that um it violates the assumption of normality of the anova test hence we cannot use anova okay what would be the 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 thing or the statistical tool that we'll be using so you know the non parameter counterpart of the one way analysis of variance so we're going to make use of this click this one and then we can see here uh, pretty much the kreskel wallace non parameter test so we're going to click this one and you know it, you will see a similar input output part here as you have seen before we're going to input the iron content and the dependent variable and the type of food in the grouping variable. Okay, there you go. So we're going to wait for the Kreskel Wallace to load up. Okay, so with this, you can see that the Kreskel Wallace p value is less than 0 0.05, implying that there is a significant difference um, among the means given. So the Kreskel Wallace also have has its own. What do you call that? A post hoc test, uh, also known as the pairwise comparisons test. So we're going to make use of this DSCF pairwise comparisons test. This is the Duas Steel Critchlow Fligner test. And we're going to, it's going to show us in which pairs or which pairs. So it's very similar to what the post hoc test use or does. Um, only that it's specified for, especially uh, made for the Kreskel Wallis test. So we're going to pair them up meats and fish versus breakfast cereals, meats and fish versus nutritional drinks, and breakfast cereals versus nutritional drinks. We're just going to look at this p-value here. And whenever the p-value shows less than 0 0.05, which is our alpha level, we're going to say that it's significant there. Okay, so it's still loading. As you can see, um, definitely meats and fish, if we're going to compare it with breakfast cereals, it's not significant. Okay? You can see here the p-value is 0 0.284. Aha, uh -huh, here, here we go. So when you compare meats and fish to nutritional drinks, you can see that it is significant. Okay. Um, I cannot add any descriptive tables here, but maybe if I go back to the previous analysis and click on descriptive tables, it can show me um, some information. Yeah. So we're just going to wait for that. Um, you can see also that when you compare breakfast and cereals and nutritional drinks, there's no significant difference. So the only significant difference is when you compete or compete, uh, rather compare meats and fish and nutritional drinks. So we're going to look ahead in their mean. Look at the mean of the meats and fish. It's 2.29. And when you look at the, the mean... Um, Iron content of the nutritional drinks at 6.46. So it is significantly different from each other. All right. Implying that if you want iron content, more iron content in your type of food, and if you're given a choice between meats and fish and nutritional drinks, you may opt, you will opt to choose the nutritional drinks because they have a higher iron content in this example. Okay. So what would be our decision rule? We reject the null hypothesis at 0 0.05 because our p-value of the crystal wallace h test is less than 0 0.05 which is our alpha level hence we rejected that 0 0.05 level of significance with that with a postdoc test you can see that meats and fish compared to nutritional drinks have a significantly different iron content therefore our conclusion would be um, there's a significant difference in the mean content specifically when you compare meats and fish and the nutritional drinks and you give some implications right after all right so that will be all for this lesson thank you very much for listening and i'll be seeing you in the next one thank you very much